Hi kids, welcome to the video. Okay, here's what's going on today. I like to do uh, advanced stuff, you know, really cool things with lighting and and uh, materials and modeling and modifiers and all sorts of stuff. Very cool stuff. Um, you'll see more of that coming up on this channel. But I wanted to take a moment, and this is it, to do a video for absolute beginners. I'm going to go through this as quickly as possible because there's only a few core things that beginners need to know. Uh, and then they could start playing with the program and learn the rest as they go along. Um, but these beginner things are very important and I never see good videos on them. The most important thing, the single most important thing, yeah, navigating, you can see that anywhere. But the single most important thing that I see a lot of people having a lot of trouble with is rendering to still frames and then combining those still frames into a movie let me explain why you do that let's say a render takes you three days let's say it's a 900 frame render you're rendering 30 seconds at 30 frames a second it's 900 frame render it's going to take three days to render that thing let's say two and a half days in you're rendering it to a movie file your power goes out or the computer crashes you lost that two and a half days. You have to start over. Uh, so what you do instead is you render to still frames. Then once you have all the still frames, and then if it cuts out in the middle, you just start it up at the at the last frame you know that it actually rendered and just keep going. You can also stop it and start it anytime you want. There's a lot of reasons for doing that. I'm going to show you how to render two still frames, then be able to find those still frames and change them into a movie. We're going to do that right now. Along the way, I'm also going to introduce you to a few of the animation features and stuff on Blender. This is going to be a short video. It sounds like I'm covering a lot of stuff, but it's very simple stuff and it shouldn't take long. And I'm not going to bang, you know, bang on the same issue over and over again because you can watch this video over again. If you miss something, just go back and watch it again. If you watch it a few times and you really miss something, like I didn't explain it right, comment. I'll answer the questions. Okay? I answer all questions. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to begin by... I'm doing this by moving the middle mouse button. Scroll up and down. Moves in and out. If I hold the middle mouse button down, that lets me rotate the screen. I'm just informing you. Uh, I don't have screencast working because this Blender 293 is there is no version of screencast keys that works. Those of you who know what I'm talking about know what I'm talking about. Those of you who don't, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to have to be telling you the keys I'm going to be hitting. It'll be tedious, but hey, you got to do what you got to do. So we're going to make a little animation with this cube. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is bring the cube up. Because right now, see, the cube splits the plane right in the middle. See that? Actually, let me put a plane in first. So I hit Shift-A, brings up this menu. I hit Plane, it puts the plane right in there. I hit S to scale. I scale that up. Now I have a nice scaled up plane, and as you can see, cuts the cube right in half. So we want to move that cube up. So I click Cube, G, Z, so it only moves in the Z plane. Let me explain that. If I hit G, it'll move in the plane that's perpendicular to my field of view. Okay. I just right click to cancel that. If I hit G and then let's say X, now it moves only along the X axis. If I hit Y, it moves only along the Y axis. If I hit Z, it moves only along the Z axis. If I hold down control, it snaps to grid lines. So now I can put it right there and it is exactly sitting on that plane. If I hit number pad zero, that shows me the view from the camera. This frame represents what the camera sees. If I click the frame, I'm now, I now have selected the camera, and I hit G, and I can move it around to get a better view, which I actually want it to be a little bit lower. Ah, it's fine where it is. But I'm going to hit R. If I hit R, I can rotate the camera. Remember, the camera is still selected. If I hit it again, now I can pan the camera around. So I just want to frame it a little bit better. And now that I'm looking at it, I think I want to move the camera back. Camera is still selected. I hit G, and then click the middle mouse button and let it go. And then I can pull back. Now, G again, and I'll just drop it. 
and then R twice to make it look like something there. That's the view we're going to use. We're not moving the camera anymore. Now, up here, I'm going to hit um, Viewport Shading. I'm going to hit the clear bubble on the right. That gives me Eevee. Now I'm looking at Eevee. These extra lines will not be in the final, final render, but they are here in the 3D viewport. So we want to animate this cube doing something. So let's go to, uh, I'm on frame one. I'm going to grab the, the cube and hit G to move it. And I'm going to hit Shift Z. And as you can see, that lights up the X and Y. What When you hit Shift and a letter, X, Y, Z, it means it can move any way except the letter you hit. Okay, So I can slide this all around the plane without uh, with staying perfectly fine. So I'll put it there and hit I to insert a keyframe. And I'm going to use um, location because that's all I'm going to do to it. Then I'm going to go down here to frame 250. Just dragging this to 250. I also could have uh, gone into this thing right here and typed in 250. Either way, I'm at frame 250, and I do the same thing, G, uh, not Z, Shift Z. I'm going to put it here. And, oh, by the way, when I when I put it there, then I right I left click to accept the move, and then I have to hit I to put in a keyframe for it. Now, if I play this just by hitting the space bar, the cube starts out, on frame one and then the machine the blender automatically interpolates the movement to the second frame now I want to put in another frame which I'm going to put in at frame 125 all right I'm in frame 125 125 I just want to move it back wow I did that wrong that's all right G, I didn't didn't hit G first okay now I move it back to about there and if what I did is I hit shift Z Shift Z toggles between look up here wireframe and EV in this case because I was using EV. But if I had it say on this, then it toggles between wireframe and that. Okay, so that's what it does. If you want to actually change that from a menu, you just hit Z by itself and it brings up these things and then you pick the one you want. But I want rendered. Okay. So I'd throw that in. Now I've got it back there, but I still haven't set a keyframe on it. So I hit I, location. And now when I play the movie, it starts over there. It'll go back to there. Then it'll come forward again. And that's all it's doing. Now I'm going to make it slightly more interesting by, see this little, this little arrow right here? If I click that, it opens up a tool menu over here. And to close and open that, you can also hit the N key, N as in Nancy. Okay, that closes and opens that. Now I want that cube to rotate. I want to rotate it around Z. In fact, let me stop it. Well, I want to stop that, go to the beginning, though it doesn't really matter where I am. Okay, I'm going to click in Z. Now you can you can put um, keyframes directly into these things too if you want to. That's a little advanced. We're not going to do that right now. Instead, I'm going to use a driver. Because <laughs> that's much less advanced. But just follow along, kids. So I hit number, or pound, as you folks call it these days. Um, the word frame divided by, let's say, 10. Now when I hit this, you're going to, you notice the cube moved a little bit. What this is going to do is it's going to take the frame number, it's going to divide it by 10, and then it's going to rotate the cube that number of radians. So now it spins around. And it'll just keep doing that. Now if, I, if, I, if that's too fast, I can put a bigger number in there to divide by. If it's too slow, I can put a smaller number in there, but I like that. That's fine. Now, stop. Now let's make it pretty. I'm going to grab this light. I'm going to hit Shift D, which duplicates it, and drag it over here. 
I can tell by the shadows on the ground that it's where I want it to be. Then I'm going to hit Shift, come back, hit both lights, hit G, Z. So I move them both down at the same time because they're just a little high. Now this left light, I want to change the color. Oh, I have to point out what I'm doing. I, I've, I've, le I've right clicked, left clicked the left light. Now I'm going down here to this light bulb. See, object data properties. And I, I'm going to leave it be a point light, but I want to change the color to some sort of blue, like that. Then I'm going to click this one. It's still set on this same thing. So I can go here and change that to some kind of reddish. That's nice. That's pretty. Now, let me go down here, turn off the background because it just annoys me, then look through the camera, number pad zero, and I get this, and if I hit this, now I can see it looks like this. And the problem here is, of course, when it gets up near the camera, uh, it's in front of the lights. And I don't want that. Now, there's a couple things I could do, but for the sake of this lesson, and not being too crazy, I'm just going to grab these lights, not Z them, hit Shift Z, and just move them until they're in front of the cube. That way that'll never happen. Through the camera, and now it looks like this. All right, that's... Uh, I've seen better, but now for more fun, while that's spinning around, let me add a modifier to it. I'm going to put a bevel modifier on it, just to make it a little bit more interesting. Knock up the divisions a little bit, and then shade smooth. I did that by um, right-clicking, brought up that menu, see, all that menu. I could shade flat, shave smooth, do various things, and uh, and that's that. So this is uh, this is what I made. Let's change that cube to something more interesting. It's currently white. I'm going to make it kind of a copper color, and then I'm going to change it to metallic, just by cranking up the metallic, and then I'm going to turn down the roughness. Now that doesn't look like much, and it doesn't look like much for a reason. We'll get to that in a moment. And I think that's good for now. Now what I have to do is go into my EV settings, which are right here. It looks like a little TV set. Uh, EV settings, and down here says screen space reflections. I'm going to turn that on so it's actually reflecting the surface underneath it. Now let's give it a quick render. F12 renders it. There it is. Now let me escape out of there. I hit escape to come back. Uh, let me show you something. F12 renders it and that covers up your thing, but this is just a window covering up your stuff. You can change the size of it, but as you can see it doesn't scale the image. You're just changing the size of the window. But anyway, just wanted to show you how that is. Because a lot of times you hit F12, that comes up. You say, what happened to Blender? It's right behind there. Okay, so let me do it again. You hit F12. This comes up. You look at it. Oh, that's cute. You can do one of two things. You can either hit the Escape key, or you can just hit the X to close it. If you want to keep it for some reason, so you can bring it back up, you can just hit um, this little Minimize thing. I'm on a Linux machine, so that's what the Minimize looks like. On a Windows, you know what to do. And then if I click down here, see, there it's still, it still is, All right? Uh, now we're going to render that. So let's look at the, that's more or less what the movie's going to look like right now, okay? I'm going to render it in a moment. Uh, when I do, I'm going to cut that part out of the video so you don't have to wait for it, but it's not going to take that long. Uh, let's turn on ambient occlusion because it looks better that way. We don't need bloom. I'll put on motion blur. I don't know if it'll actually work on this one. And that's fine. Uh, the shadows look decent, and we're not really worried about it all that much. 
Although the camera's bothering me. Let me move that down a little bit. There. Okay, that's it. Now I'm going to render that. Now, here's the part that this video is really all about. How do you render this to individual frames, and how do you turn those frames into a movie? First, I go to the part that looks like a printer with a piece of paper sticking out of it, and in here you have the render settings. Now it's set for 1080p, and everything's fine. It won the thing. It's set for 24 frames a second. Okay, that's fine. Right here, output. You click this, and it brings up. So let me go to the desktop, and I'm going to add a folder by clicking the little Add Folder button. Comes up called New Folder. I'm going to call it Movie Lesson One. I hit Enter. There it is. Now I make sure I select Movie Lesson One and open it up because I want whatever I save to be inside it. So up here it shows me where I'm saving it. And then down here I give it a name and I'm going to call it uh, Fluffy. Why Fluffy? Why not? I hit Accept. Now if you look over here, it says Home, Me, Desktop, Movie Lesson 01. That's the name of the folder. And then Fluffy is the name of the files that's going to be saving there. The files that it's going to be saving are PNGs, it says right here. And they can be black and white, they could be RGB, or they could be RGBA. RGBA means RGB with an alpha channel. I'm not doing an alpha channel, and I don't feel like wasting the memory, so I'm going to change that to RGB. But if you want to save them with an alpha channel, obviously you save it with RGBA. Now that's ready to go. At this point, all I have to do is hit Control F12. Oh, by the way, the way you can find hotkeys up here under Render, says render image F12. Underneath it, it says render animation, control F12. See, most of what you need to know is actually in Blender. Just look for it. Okay, um, now I'm going to render this. Although, now that I look at it, I want to do something. So I'm going to add a, um, a light, an area light. And I'm going to GZ that to get it up in the air a bit. And then I want to move it G back here a bit. Look from the side. Angle it this way. And scale it way the hell up. And then make it, see if I got that right. Yeah, I probably do. And then go to the light itself and change the color to like a real deep, dark purple. See what that looks like from the camera. It doesn't look like anything. It's not bright enough. So looking from the camera, I'm going to make this a thousand watts. There we go. Ah, it just fills it in a little better. That's that's nice. Okay, that's, that's pretty, right? Good. Glad you all agree. Yeah, I like that. All right. Now I just have to render the animation. And it doesn't matter what's over here. I've already set this stuff. But I do like to have this here when I actually render it, just so I double check it to make sure I'm doing it what I want. Now I'm going to stop it. I don't have to. And then I hit Control F12. Remember we saw that up here. Render animation is Control F12. Hit Control F12. And that's it. It is now rendering the animation. You're seeing it happen, and it's taking about uh, 0.6 seconds per frame to do it. I'm going to cut this part out, and I'll come back when it's finished and show you what to do next. Okay, that's the last frame. This thing doesn't tell me how long the entire animation took, but it was, it was, it was a while. I'd say about uh, at least uh, uh, almost 10 minutes. If I hit Control F11, it's going to load in the, the still frame animation that it just made and then run it. When it first loads in, it can't play it in real time because it's getting them in memory. Because it's playing these full frames. But then the animator will play it. There it goes. Now that's what the movie is more or less going to look like once I turn it into a movie. But it isn't a movie yet. It's just playing this directly out of the folder of the still frames. So let's get going.
So what do you do next? Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save this file exactly the way it is right now. And I'm going to call it cube lesson. Yeah. I'll save that. Bam. That being saved, I'm going to give that to you. If you if you go down underneath this video, that file will be there. It might not be on YouTube, but if you click on the link and get to my blog where I'll have this video embedded, you could you'll be able to download the that this Blender file from there. Now the next step is I'm going to just start up a new file. Um, which will be video editing. Okay, so what I did, let me show you. On the desktop here, somewhere I have whatever this is called, Movie Lesson 1. And in this folder are all of these frames. Now here's how I'm going to turn it into a movie. With Blender, remember I opened it up in video editing mode. Okay, down here there's a thing called Add. I hit Add. I go to Image Sequence. And then I look, I navigate to the folder I just made, which is Movie Lesson 1. And there they all are. I click the top one. And then I scroll down to the bottom one. And there's no scroll bar for some reason. And then I shift click on the bottom one. And that selects all of them. Then I hit Add Image Strip, and there it is. Now, this has all those frames that I just made. Now I come over to the Output section right here. And let me scroll that down. You'll notice this is the same thing we had on the other one. So it's going into Temp, which is not where we want it. So I'm going to put it on desktop. Now I'm going to put it right into that same folder, but you can put it anywhere you like if you have another folder. Movie Lesson 1. And I'm going to change the name of it and make sure I'm in Movie Lesson 1, which I am. Give it a name. I'm going to call it, uh, I don't want to call it Fluffy because I don't want to confuse anything. So I'm going to call it Barney. It, it is helpful if you use names that actually mean something. I tend to just use whatever pops into my head, which when in larger projects has come back to bite me in the ass. So I hit accept. Now that's ready to record. And if I would do this, what I'd end up with is a series of pings in there with the name Barney and numbers. For, no, I don't want that. So I'm going to go to where it says ping. I'm going to change it to FFmpeg video RGB is correct encoding I have options but I like H.264 medium quality that's good there's things you can change it to in here see you can change it to any of these you can change the quality if you want better quality if you're using this as an original you want to video edit and you know that sort of thing uh, and so on but that's the important part I'm just showing you how to do it right now. That's it. Now with this change to video and Kodak, name Barney in the thing. Now watch this. Remember, it took about 10 minutes to render that movie. And it may take you uh, 20 minutes. It may take you three days. It may take you a week to render your movie. But now I have it in the video editor. It's already been rendered. And all Blender has to do is assemble it into a film. Oh, there's one other thing I do want to mention. Make sure that your resolution up here is set to the same resolution as however you saved the pictures in the first place. Otherwise, it's going to scale it and it's going to and it's going to look different. Now, watch the magic happen. I hit again F12, same thing. And you're seeing it rendering out the video. And as you can see, it takes less than a tenth of a second per frame. I'm not even going to cut this. You're going to see it finish. It's already uh, about a almost. It's ha almost halfway through already, right? Because Blender, 
it doesn't have to calculate anything. It's just grabbing those pictures that you already rendered and it's assembling them into a video format, compressing them and, you know, doing what you do and encoding them to make it a video. That's it. It's done. How long did that take? That was less than a minute, right? Now I don't need Blender anymore, so let's uh, scooch that down, and there is the file. And if I just click it, it'll open with whatever whatever thing is is in here. There it is. I hit the space bar, and voila! This is being played in whatever the movie player that comes with Linux Mint is. Usually I play things in um, VLC, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The point is I can now send this to Facebook. I can send it to YouTube. I can do whatever I want with it. It's a real movie file now. And that is how it's done. Uh, that's all I want to do. If you like what I do here, uh, click subscribe, ring the bell if there's still a bell. Uh, if you run into somebody who's asking, hey, how do you do this? Point them to this video. Let them know it's here. Any, any, Every little bit helps. And I also want to thank, I noticed that I only have two videos on this channel and I have close to 50 subscribers already. That's, that's a good thing. I like that. That's very encouraging. I want to thank each and every one of you for subscribing. And, um, and don't be afraid if, if you have any trouble with this or anything else, even stuff I haven't covered in videos. Leave comments, ask questions, I answer everything. That's also where I know, where I find out what I should be teaching because, you know, I can teach anything. I know all kinds of stuff. I've been doing this for over a decade, but I have no idea what most interests people, what you need to know. So let me know that and I'll, uh, I'll do videos about whatever you want. I'll see you in the next one. Oh, and don't forget to go to the blog. You can get this file if you want it for some reason.